Hello everybody, this is Mihal. Today I'll be running you through a Python script I wrote to automate a personal task. You might be familiar with this task as I already recorded a video showing how I automated it using robotic process automation. For the benefit of those who didn't watch the video, I will explain the task again. I run a weekly basketball session through Meetup's web platform. Some people pay me in advance through PayPal, others pay me in cash on the day. In order to stay on top of this, I need to create ahead of every session a checklist on my phone with all the attendees. I'll then tick off those who pay me. You can imagine how repetitive this is. And it's also a bit stressful as I always need to be 100% accurate. Alright, so let's now move on to the solution. My Python script uses a number of files, with meetup to gtasks.py representing the main one. Here it is opened. The first task I needed to complete is to get the list of attendees from meetup. Line 23 has the code that enables me to achieve this. You can see that I'm leveraging a function stored in another file called meetup. Here it is. Basically, this function connects to the API offered by meetup, the website, to pull the list of attendees. The API is very straightforward to use and has great documentation. As you can see from here. The only thing I needed to have before making the connection was the API key. Once you have a standard user account with Meetup, it is just a matter of going to the API key page on the documentation site. I'm hiding my key in another library because I obviously don't want my account to be hacked. Using this key, I'll first send a request to a link that will provide me with my most recent events on the website. That way, I'm able to obtain the identifier for my upcoming session. This identifier will then help me get the list of attendees in JSON format. Alright, the next step is to find out who's paid me in advance via PayPal. Line 34 does this. You can see how once again, I'm storing the function in another file. This is it. I have to admit that developing this proved to be very tricky for several reasons. To begin with, PayPal has several APIs, each with its own purpose and functionalities. If I just wait for this page to load up, there you go. So now this web page shows the documentation page for the API, which should be used for pulling transactions. The API is called PayPal Sync API. Let me now go to my developer dashboard and log in once again. Okay, so in order to use the Sync API, you need to create an app right here which will give you a client ID and a secret for a sandbox account as well as a live account. Make sure you copy the credentials corresponding to the live version. If we now go back to the paypal.py script 
lines 8 to 9 have the variables that contain these credentials. You then use them to request from the API an access token. I actually created another function, get underscore token, that handles this request. I then use this function in the main get transaction function to obtain the list of my account's transaction between two set dates. All right. Let's go back to the main script. Line 37 leverages a function in another library, which, as you can see from here, puts the data from a CSV file into a variable. This is a file, and the data represents a mapping between attendees' names on meter and the names that the attendees use when making payments through PayPal. If we now go back to the main script, you'll see in lines 43 to 53, How the mapping is used. We go through each transaction we pull through PayPal and check if the person's name is in the mapping table. I also check whether the payment amounted to £8 as I receive money from other things in my PayPal account. If the conditions hold true, we store the pays name in the unmarked pays variable which we will use when building the attendee list. Any names which we couldn't find in the table are stored in another variable called unmapped pays. This variable will be output as a message at the end in order to remind me to do the mapping for those people. Now that we are done with data preparations, it is time to move on to the last step, which is to create an attendees checklist. If you watch my previous video, you might recall that I selected Wonderlist as my checklist app. This user interface, both the desktop and mobile version, is unrivaled. Since Wonderlist offers an API, I wanted to use it in my script as well. However, I discovered that you need to create an app that has a website URL and an authorization callback URL. You would also have to wait until you get approval from Wonderlist administrators. So I decided to look for another app. And the best one I could find is Google Tasks. The app ticked all my boxes as it had a friendly mobile app interface and an API which is easily accessible. If we now go back to the main script, lines 58 to 65 basically copy what you are told in the API's documentation when you want to build a request. The proprietary code starts here, where I give the instruction to create a checklist in Google Tasks which will hold my attendees. I then create a for loop which adds the attendees one by one. Now, the list generated from Meetup's API call cool, will actually include those who have said they won't be attending the event. That's why I first have to check what the attendee's response attribute is. Also exclude myself as the organizer from the list. 
lines 80 to 85, help me add the payer as a task in Google Tasks. But if the person already has paid me online, I'll set the task status as completed. This enables me to keep the person in the list, but have him or her marked off. I then make the call to the Google Tasks API to add the participant. If your she is bringing guests, I will add them one by one as a separate tasks. And in the end, I mention in the outputs those who have paid me, but either A didn't appear in the meetup list, or B didn't appear in the mapping between PayPal and meetup names. All right. Let's run a quick demonstration of how I would use it. I go to the command line interface, which already has the scripts folder set as its current directory. I then type python meetup to gtasks.py and let it do its magic. Now that it's finished, let's see whether it's done everything right. So this is the list of attendees on my Meetup Events page. You can see there's 13 people that are going, but that includes myself as the organizer. So the checklist should have 12 people. All right, let's go on to goal tasks. And first I will refresh the page. Then I will go to the task list for this week's event and you should see here all the attendees let's count them one by one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven hmm so we were supposed to have twelve but then if I go into completed you'll see that one person has been marked off. And then if I look into this email notification here, you will see why. Basically, this participant has already paid me in advance for the event. All right, so this is how I managed to automate my personal task using Python. In the description of this video, I've added a link to the GitHub page which stores all of this code, with the exception of my login credentials to the APIs I've used. I also included links to the documentation pages of these APIs. So that's it. Hope you found this video interesting, and see you later.